welcome to part three and the final part of my underwater seascape project. In this part, I will be making the background for the project and then tack fuse all the elements that I made in the previous parts onto the background to finish it. I hope you enjoyed this and if you watched part one and, one and two, I hope you enjoyed it and um, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that this all will work out. Um, I will have to go to the tech notes and everything I think hard and long about the, the final fire, firing schedule. And um, so let's get started. To start with, I'm going to cut my bottom layer. And um, I have measured my template. It is 39 centimeters. And therefore, I'm going to put set my circle cutter to 39 centimeters. And um, afterwards, I'm going to leave it exactly where it is now. So when I cut the turquoise and the French vanilla, that it will be at exactly the same uh, place and I can cut them the correct sizes. So I've got this at 39 centimeters. Instead of turning it around and pressing on it immediately, I have broken a few pieces of glass that way before. So I'm using the little ball on this glass cutter and I'm just going to tap lightly on the score line until I see that the score line running. You can see now how it has start to run here and how it continues to run. You just need a little bit of patience for this and not tap too hard. This is a big piece of glass so I don't want to break it so I will rather have be patient and do it the long way than to have to take out another piece of glass. just came off just like that because of uh, the tapping and now I can go on this way Okay, this one does not want to run on the score line. Okay, I just do it around my piece of glass and this piece also just came out just like that. That's the nice thing about tapping it. Sometimes you struggle, oh, there comes the other piece. 
and uh, mostly the circle will come out nice. Here we have the bottom layer for the background. Next, I'm going to cut my water port, uh, which is turquoise, translucent, triple one six. And um, so I'm going to use my template. And this is going to be the blue port or the turquoise port. And I'm just going to cut this out. And then I'm just going to see, I'm just going to mark here up to where I must cut. So I can put my circle cutter I don't have to cut a complete circle obviously because I'm not going to be using a complete circle for this. So this will be fine. Okay. And then I'm just going to go ahead again and tap this one to get the circle out. I have my blue half circle and I'm just going to trace my template on here. And then I can cut out my turquoise. I think I'm just going to put a piece of white paper underneath so I can just see the line better. just be nice and smooth for the sand patch board to fit in nicely and to be able to trace this one onto the French vanilla so I'm just going to grind it a little bit okay so my water port is done and the side is nice and smooth so I will go get go ahead and get my French vanilla uh, to do to make a sand patch. Okay, I've cut my board circle in the French vanilla and uh, I'm not best friends with Appalachian when it comes to cutting. So I broke off a piece, but all is not lost because um, the template actually fits, still fits onto the um, area but in order to make sure that it is does fit in with the turquoise sorry <laughs> I'm going to let me put this one at the bottom so I have my exact circle I'm going to use the turquoise to draw, to trace the line. Okay. And if 
by this. So that fit should fit in. Exactly. This is exactly on the circle. This is exactly on the circle. There we go. And then I can just double check it with the template. I'm going to cut this piece and hopefully I don't break the gloss again so fingers crossed I have success so um, I'll just fit it onto my clear gloss and uh, yes it looks like they fit perfect let just turn it around so it can be right side around for you. And so here I have my sand and my water. So I'm going to use some uh, fine frit just to give it a little bit more of effect and depth. So um, I will just set that up and then I will be back. I have cleaned all my gloss with some um, alcohol and I have my clear tactile waiting on the shelf um, which I have covered with uh, Bullseye Kiln Wash and um, so I'm going to try to put a little bit of depth, depth into the sand patch with a light bronze, light bronze powder 1409 I'm just going to go around the edges um, a thick layer and then just smooth it out to the inside. give a little bit of depth to the sand patch and then I will place this onto my clear tactile and I will do the water pot and then for the water pot I'm going to use a deep royal blue translucent triple one four and I want to start out dark and then light it to the top where the sun supposedly comes through. The background has been full fused. Um, it came out very smooth. I fused um, the first ramp was very slow and um, also the first hold was quite long and I'm quite happy with how it came out. So for now first I want to just with some super glue uh, put these and the eyes on the on the little fish so they don't fall off uh, I just need to clean them the background has already been cleaned I'm 
just going to let these dry. So I have my background on my kiln shelf. I have some thin paper on here, but you don't need to use thin paper. You can uh, do it on kiln wash. And um, I have changed my mind. I'm not going to slump it. Um, I'm just going to do a full scene, which I can afterwards either put on a stand or hang it on the wall. The Glasshopper has a very nice tutorial on um, how to hang it, mount it on the wall, hang it on the wall with uh, a translucent square tube. So I'm going to start to assemble this. I will turn the video around when I um, put the entire video together so you can also see it upright. I, I won't be able to do it upside down. I would rather like to see what I'm doing. And um, as I go along, I'm just going to clean up the pieces again. They have been cleaned, but um, I'm just going to clean them again. pieces that I made in uh, the first two parts of this uh, tutorial or video series. I'm going to add the shells that I've spoken about before, which were freeze infused. And then I have this white and brown 2109. Uh, it's white opal dark brown two color mix extra large and um, I'm going to add some of this this all around And then before I'm going to add more of these, I just want to add some of the little store shells. And then also I decided to put the beauty branch at the bottom. And then I've got these colored pieces that I made with the frit in the in the, in the second um, part of this video series. And then I have all these little pieces of peacock and mirini, which I'm full fused, just to add some more color. Fish. 
found a fish. And then I'm going to add some bubbles. Okay, so you can just arrange them as you like and then this will go in for a tuck fuse. As I was working out my schedule for the tuck fuse and I also spoke a bit about it um, with my teacher and my mentor, um, afterwards I realized with the temperature it might happen that the, um, the blue spotted stingray might go flat again and I've decided to cut two pieces of three millimeter fiber again the same as I did when I did the contour fuse and um, put it underneath um, to ensure it does not slump flat again. I spoke about this to my teacher and um, she said she's never done it before that she trapped um, fiber in between two pieces of glass and um, she was a bit concerned that um, there might be air or gas that will need to come out and um, so I looked at the tail part and saw that it's a little bit bent so that will make a little hole and hopefully the air or any gas will escape from there and, um, so it won't make a bubble on top and uh, so I don't recommend doing this because um, yes it's a chance I'm taking um, but it's up to you what you want to try to do and it's easy experiment so I'm taking chances but only after I put it in the kiln and it started firing I realized I could have actually cut two pieces of glass in the same shape and sizes and put those underneath um, that would have been much safer so that is something that you can think of um, when you make this I have it out of the kiln and um, the first thing I looked at was the stingray and it came out perfect and um, everything kept its shape and texture and um, but the clownfish then I saw the one eye came off the fin came off this one almost off and only one eye stayed in its place um this was the experiment so i'm not going to worry too much about this um it um it's not a, a problem with the, the the method or um the fusing schedules or so it's um just gravity got hold of it and um, lesson learned is um, that in future small tiny pieces of glass like this that have been full fused they round a little bit uh, to not put small things on it because um, it's not it's not flat enough at the top and uh, so I would say if you do this or if I do this in future leave out the fin and the eye because they still look cute without it so and um, otherwise yes I'm um, I'm really happy with it and I think the experiment was a success. So this is the end of this project or let me rather say experiment. I feel much more comfortable with contour fusing and techniques and tack fusing after this. And if you have any comments or questions, you're welcome to go to my Facebook page and contact me through there. And um, so the schedules will be on your screen after this and thank you again for watching.